Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give you my comparison between Adobe Premiere Pro 2018 and DaVinci Resolve 14, the free version. Now, DaVinci Resolve also has the studio version, which costs $2.99, uh, but the base version gives you pretty much everything, just missing out on a few things. Whereas Adobe Premiere Pro, the CC version, which is the version you use for the last few years, comes as a subscription model. $20 a month, along with pretty much everything in the Adobe Cloud. So that includes programs like Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Animate, Adobe Media Encoder, and a lot of other very interesting tools for people who are trying to create multimedia or art. So at a core level, you can probably tell just by looking at it that the two apps are very, very similar in what they do, how they operate, and what you can actually achieve within them. And compared to many free tools that are out there, such as Caden Live, OpenShot, I guess if you really want to go far back, Windows Movie Maker, these tools are much more professional. You can actually do a lot of really cool effects inside of both DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere, which you would see if you check out some tutorials on either my channel, which you would be able to check out if you go ahead and see some of my tutorials or tutorials on other similar channels as well. So. Regardless of which app you're using, the process is basically the same. You have the Assembly tab in Premiere and the Media tab inside of DaVinci Resolve. That's where you manage all the files in your computer or network locations. You can basically add whatever you want here and load up your media very quickly into your actual project. When you save a video project, it's going to include links to all of the different locations you have on your computer where you're storing audio assets, images, or more importantly, video files. Once you have that done, you can go over to the editing tab inside of Adobe Premiere, where you have the timeline in the bottom right, with very similar tools that you would see once again inside of DaVinci Resolve. So over here, you have the ability to do things like slice, select, insert, snapping, zooming in and out of the timeline, working on multiple video and audio tracks, something absolutely crucial for modern video editors. And pretty much the same set of tools inside of Adobe Premiere, they're just organized slightly differently. So from there you go over to the color tab inside of Adobe Premiere, and you can start playing around with all kinds of things on the right side. Uh, basically editing properties to change contrast, brightness, the hue of your video. It's also possible to target mid-tone shadows and highlights with different colors if you want the shadows to get a different hue than you want the bright areas of the highlights in your video to change very similar to what you would see in tools like GIMP or Adobe Photoshop. This is just for video. So in DaVinci Resolve, a little bit of a difference of how everything is organized is that on the color tab, you pretty much combine both manual visual effects and color changes into one tab. So if you want to do something like mask part of your video layer or target part of a person's face with something like a blur effect, you would do that in the color tab as well as any color changes. So it's kind of all in one on this tab. Uh, whereas in Adobe Premiere, it's actually separated over into the effects tab. So the stuff you want to do like blurring or chroma key is pretty much going to be done inside of this tab instead. Now to talk about the out of the box transitions and effects that are available to you in DaVinci Resolve, uh, those are actually applied over on the edit tab for DaVinci Resolve. So you have things like video transitions, quite a decent selection there. You have a couple of generators here, such as putting a solid color as one layer, so you don't really have to bring in an image for a solid color. There's also a good selection of filters you can put over your video. So you got blurs up at the top, other tools like turning your video watercolor, shaking the camera, or adding in a ripple effect into your video. Now it's worth mentioning, not all of the effects you actually see on this list are available in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. When you do get the pro version, they add in a lot more here. And some of the ones that are listed, it'll just say, oh, you hit a roadblock, you have to upgrade to the full version. But uh, most of those effects don't really come into regular video editing. It's just for people who are looking for very fancy stuff. Now, in terms of audio effects, that is one of the weaknesses of DaVinci Resolve, the free version at least. Uh, because all you really have available to you is crossfading between clips, which is fine. Now, thankfully, you can also add in VST plugins from third-party sources. So if you wanted to bring in a tool to get a certain effect or to remove some of the background noise inside of your video, you can still do that inside of DaVinci Resolve Free. But as far as out-of-the-box stuff goes, you're going to really struggle with audio. You'll have to go out and seek some extra tools. 
Now, compare that to Adobe Premiere. You have quite a truckload of audio effects here, as well as a lot of video transitions and video effects. And because it's already the fully paid professional version, everything here has no more paywalls or anything. Once you have it, everything you see is available to you. And definitely Adobe Premiere has a lot of different effects you can play around with. Now, because I currently edit in the regular version of DaVinci Resolve, I don't actually know exactly how many effects they add in for the studio version, which once again is $2.99. Um, but that's one of the things they definitely highlight on their website. So if I had to take a guess, I would imagine it's pretty comparable to Adobe Premiere in that regards. So I would have to imagine that DaVinci Resolve Studio is pretty similar to Adobe Premiere and when it comes to that regards. So when you go over to the audio tab though, and you want to play around with your tracks, manipulate some of the decibel levels, or you want to cue up a track for recording a voiceover, uh, once again, it's very similar between the two apps. You can record in both programs. You can have a heck of a lot of audio tracks simultaneously. For the mixer in DaVinci Resolve, you can add in special effects. You can play around with the equalizer or the dynamics. So you can also add those same changes in Adobe Premiere, but generally they come as a added audio effect. So if you wanted something like audio dynamics, you drop it on the clip first, and then you would actually edit it. Now, uh, something else you'll probably notice is that, of course, Adobe Premiere also supports VST plugins, so it's mixed in with these audio effects here. Uh, you can see I have some, like, Effector Silencer added in here, uh, the Reaper tools, and a few other random ones. But a lot of these, especially the ones that are capitalized properly, like Adaptive Noise Reduction, Coarse Flinger, de or Dehummer, those are actually built into Adobe Premiere, so you really don't need to rely on external VST plugins too much but you have that option if you want it. Now, as far as titles and graphics go, Adobe Premiere is definitely superior in that. You have a lot of out-of-the-box title sequences where you can drop those into your timeline. And once you have it in your timeline, you can edit each part of that piece by piece. You can also add in new layers, which is pretty nice if you want to have a complicated title and you don't want to mix multiple titles on the same screen, but rather have it all as one clip in your timeline. So you can just kind of click on those, get a lot of tools for editing them. And now DaVinci Resolve also has a lot of tools, but they don't have many templates out of the box. So you're going to need to customize your titles a lot more. So here, let's go over to the titles in DaVinci Resolve and just kind of show what I mean. There's five options here for the free version, and they're kind of underwhelming. So it's like, oh, well, you have a title sequence. So, you know, you want to change the font? Sure. You want to add in drop shadow or background? Yep, you can do that. But beyond that, it's a little bit limited. I imagine um, you're probably going to want to import a lot of external graphics to support those. So maybe if you want some uh, detailed stickers on the screen, you would import those as separate images and use that within DaVinci Resolve. But once again, that's just a limitation of the totally free version. The studio version may have more default titles you can drop in. So once you're done editing your video inside of DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere, you have a lot of export settings available to you, the ability to manipulate what kind of export format you're going to be setting, the resolution, the bit rate, and you're going to have a lot of formats available to you in both programs. I do believe that Adobe Premiere has more, but it's actually not too bad inside of DaVinci Resolve either. You can see about 1012, including important ones like MP4 or QuickTime, um, available to you in DaVinci Resolve, and then those and more inside of Adobe Premiere. Also, you can queue up your exports in both programs, so you don't have to do one at a time necessarily unless you want to. In conclusion, I would say the takeaway for this video should be that both Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve are very comparable video editors. They're obviously targeted at people who are willing to take a few more steps to learn the apps um, than some of those more simple tools out there. With complexity comes a bit of a learning curve, but both programs have a very well-designed interface, and they're not too hard to use once you spend a couple hours and get going with it. Beyond that, I would say that if you are a Adobe fan, and that you want to use or already do use tools like Photoshop, then you probably just want to pick up all of the Adobe packages as one big $20 a month subscription, and just go with that as your overall suite for doing multimedia production. Now, if you are kind of on a budget or broke or just want to step into video editing just a bit, 
then I would definitely recommend checking out Da Vinci Resolve, because in my opinion, Da Vinci Resolve is the best free video out there. Adobe Premiere also has a 7 day free trial if you want to try it without paying anything. Um, but ultimately, after you kind of figure out which app you would like to use, if you do want to get more towards that kind of professional level, then you can, then hopefully you'll be able to gather enough information to make the choice if it's better to pay the subscription fee for Adobe or to pay the flat $300 fee for Resolve Studio. So beyond that, I would definitely say check out some of the other tutorials on my channel, and that'll give you a good idea of what's possible within both of the apps. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future video content.